I, I feel really European, you know, I, I grew up in France, I then moved to the UK, I might, you know, might move to Brussels soon, etc, etc, you know, and the EU kind of feels like a part of my life and I feel very positively about it. Um, but that being said, you know, that is because I come from a certain type of background and was educated a certain way, you know, in my case that means having gone to quite a good school, which meant that I learnt English from quite a young age, so from again quite a young age I thought, you know, like even before I knew I was going to move to London, I thought if I wanted to move somewhere, I know I could because, you know, not just because um, I wouldn't need a passport or a visa or anything, but just, you know, because I've got those language skills. And also, of course, I think once you've learned one language, you know that you can learn another one or another one. Um, there's that. There's also the fact that, I, you know, it was never in question, the fact that I would go to university and at least do a degree. And so, again, there was that possibility in my head of going, OK, well, my degree, I could do it in Paris if I wanted to. I could do it in London. I could do it anywhere in the EU. What, you know, if you're looking at, you know, let's say someone who grew up in a town in the north of England is from a working class background, no one in their family has gone to university, no one in their family learns, has ever learned another language or anything, what is the EU offering? You know, and, and it's not, I think, you can talk about, you know, the investment, you know, the way the EU has invested in parts, for example, of England that, you know, governments in Westminster have not and stuff like that, but that's not really the kind of, like, personal, you know, what you call, I think, the fuzzy stuff, I think the stuff that matters, the stuff at the personal level. It's like, you know, what does the EU have to offer me? What am I getting from living in a country that is a member of the European Union? And so what does the EU have to offer those people, the people who don't even, you know, let's say, want to learn another language or study abroad or live abroad or even go on holiday abroad? You know, that's entirely fine. Some, you know, some people, that that's not something they want to do. And so what the EU has nothing kind of to offer to that. And so I, again, so yeah, I mentioned the fact that that's a point I made again about this time last year, I think. So it was the book launch from a former Italian um, Europe minister, which was about the kind of like new generation Europe and the fact that actually, you know, we have some people who are now, I'm guessing from their kind of like early 20s to mid 30s who have grown up with all this kind of like cultural European Union and saying that actually they're going to be the ones who save Europe because, you know, because they grew up as fundamentally Europeans and again from that personal point of view as well. But I don't, I mean, I, yeah, I, I completely, completely <laughs> disagree because actually, if anything, you're creating that class of people who I think socially are even more separated from the people who are not benefiting or have not benefited from the EU, again, at that kind of like personal granular level. And, you know, and I don't think they're the ones who can properly save it. So I think, yeah, un unless, until the EU has a proper thing about what you offer, I think, to those people, it is going to keep on being unpopular with whole sections of the population in most of the EU27. Maybe, I mean, maybe there could be some EU level, um, you know, scheme to maybe do that with kind of, yeah, like younger students, so you make sure they're you know, pre-16, so you make sure that everyone, even people who leave education quite young, um, still have access to that. Maybe, you know, like make language lessons better. But I think, again, like that, I think there are a number of solutions you can think about, but the problem is that you do need the cooperation of the nation states, like you need that kind of like policy work at a nation state level. So again, so yeah, that is better language classes, making sure that, yeah, like I think exchange at schools, but again, I think the EU could help with that. And so yes, I think, you know, teaching, I think making sure, it, it's more on the cultural side, I guess, you know, just teaching people and just saying, you know, these countries are kind of, you know, the, you're part of the same continent, you're part of the same thing, and you should learn more.